But some things never change. When it comes to sourcing stock that's fresh to market, there's a staple of the trade that's top of every dealer's wish list, a house call at a stately home. Today, the boys are heading west to the north coast of Cornwall. So today, we are going back to one of my favourite houses in the country and one of my favourite people. We're going back to meet Elizabeth Prido Brun at Prido Place. Lovely, very lovely place. So we went there 10 years ago, too. Did we? 10 years ago. We must have made an impact. They've had a straight that one. Sauce. What attracts me to it is the colour. Today, Drew is once again being shown around by the lady of the manor. I'm Elizabeth Prido Bruin, and Peter, my husband, is the 14th generation of Prido to live here. It's very strange, this house. There are 82 rooms. About 40 of them are just filled with junk. You know, just being chucked in there. And so Drew came for, and um, I learned so much from him during the day. He was an encyclopedia of knowledge on the arts. I was, I, I had such fun. I loved it. Welcome back. Hello, Elizabeth. How are you? Very well, thank you. And you? Good, thank you. Good, long good. journey. Hello. Hi, Dave. A long journey. How are we yes. Doing? Yeah. But we're in the area, and we thought we'd come and say hello. Have we all got more wrinkles, less hair, grey? <laughs> you still look good. Oh. We've not yeah. fared so well. Yeah. He's got less know. hair, I've got more. You've got more hair. <laughs> yeah. Can we have a look around again? Yeah, of course you can. I'm going to Come try and buy in. all the things I couldn't buy last time. OK, Dick. Yeah? This interior, obviously, it's Walpole strawberry gothic influence all over this. Yeah, of course. Cool. And it just doesn't get any better than that. It's good, it? isn't it? Yeah, so, you've great. got to remind me, can I buy anything in here? Because... No. Oh, go on. Sorry. These, I mean, look at, look at these. That really uncomfortable. Oh, really... I know, but it doesn't matter. But look at yeah, them. Yeah, they're great, aren't they? Oh, there's a cobweb. That's Oops. okay. They all come with those. The rules are that anything that's in the inventory from 1988, when his father died, can't be sold. Mm. So I'm afraid these are all heritage items, so you can't have them. I know. This is what happens with a large proportion, most of the, the big country houses of this country. It means that the pieces can never be sold from the house. It's a double-edged sword. It's great for the nation. Bad for antique dealers. So we're now going to what was the coach house. Uh, it's now the garage and also doubles as the junk, another of the junk rooms. This isn't junk. OK. It's not junk. There's a couple of half-decent things in here. Yeah. Uh, that's uh, big of you to say, then. They are. They are. Well, they were. OK. They were uh, back in the day. They're a bit beaten up now. So um, now, unsurprisingly, we are out in the stable block. As soon as I open the door, straight away I can see three things immediately that I'm interested in looking at more. I want to, I want to know a bit more about those. These may be of interest, okay. unsurprisingly, these grubby old chairs. Just need to check they're a similar size. I'm thinking this one might be a little bit smaller. Oh, is it? They look like a pair. Do you mind they? if we just hoik no, them no. out? No, no, absolutely. Help yourself. Tea? Yeah. OK, I'll pop your head. Do you want me to go out first? <sighs> All right, let's just lay them on its back. On its back, we're not going to... Do any damn more, more damage than already there. Okay, so very good Cope and Collinson caster on the back there. Very nice. Yes. Let's get the other one out. There's a pair of 19th century low open armchairs, and they're good. You can tell, very good leg, very good caster, Cope Collinson casters, the Rolls Royce of, of caster manufacturers in the 19th century. They're in a right state. I'd say. But <laughs> worth the journey. Well, they could be. They've got, they've got a good name. A name is there, there. See? What does it say? Holland and Son. Flip it up. Unsurprised to see on both of them, Holland and Sons. So extremely good London maker. The quality of what they did was just better than most. To be honest, is up there. It was right up there. Holland and Sons was founded in 1843 and were later granted a royal warrant by Queen Victoria. They made furniture for Buckingham Palace and Balmoral, among other royal residences. This pair of armchairs date to the Victorian period and, once refurbished, could be worth around £2,750. I don't have any plans for them, I must confess. Apart from sending them to vast price to you. Well, I'll buy them. I'm not sure about a vast price, but well, I'll oh, buy them. On. One would be worth very little. A pair really helps Just them good a news. Lot. Yeah. yeah. Um, I'm trying to... This is why I'm talking so long, cos I'm just trying to work out a price. <laughs> uh, <laughs> it's funny you say that, cos in my head, I was thinking, what's going to offer me? <laughs> um, let's kick off at 600. Oh. OK, quite 
which is Quite not a fair. It's a fairish bid. The, uh, people go, God, that's cheap. Yeah. There's a thousand quid to spend. Seven fifty. Seven hundred quid. Done. Sold. Sold. Brilliant. I'm going to carry on. Okay. There's a couple more things in here. There's one. There's this table, which is intriguing, but there's yep. something over there, which I'm hoping you can tell me what they are. I think I know what they are. Oh. Ah. Um, those. What? Those screens there. I have no idea. I have to be totally honest. Um, I haven't got a clue. If you look on them, right, they've got a scene, a battle scene. Oh. Can you see it? It's hard well, to... I can just see to... faint, yeah. So yeah, I'd be I've... really interested in those. OK. Really interesting to know, just to get them out and okay. see what the hell okay. they okay. are. OK, I'll go and see I mean, if I can really find... Spectacular. find some manpower. Could see if you can find some manpower, because there's a daybed underneath there. Can you see that? Yes. Yeah. So if I, am I right to just have a sift through this lot while yeah, I can sift. find some manpower? OK. All right. There's about eight or nine things in this garage that I need to see. So, we need some help. Hello, chaps. Here they are. Right. Anna and Rod are here to help so, you. So, we want to move some stuff. This table is of interest underneath it. So, that there. Should we grab, let's get this one out now? Which way you want to go? Come straight out. Next thing to come out of the shed, is a breakfast table. It's mahogany, it's uh, very late 18th century. It's covered in dog scratches. It's about nine different colours because it's faded all over and marked, but it's utterly charming and I love it. This one I recognised when it was underneath all this stuff. It's rotten, but it's a nice one. OK, Coke Collinson, Pat Castor. And you wouldn't pay any attention whatsoever, apart from the fact I'm 99.9% .9 sure it's by Howard and Sons. Um, as it stands, uh, 350 quid. OK. Is, is what it's worth to me. I mean, it would cost me a fortune to get it restored, re About 1,500 to 2,500, depending say. on At which way you want to go At this stage, it becomes uneconomical for me to keep it, yeah. isn't it? So even I won't restore that. We will clean that frame up, take all the bits and bobs off it, yeah. get it cleaned, repair the caster, right. do that and then sell it as it is. OK. We wouldn't, we wouldn't upholster it, we'll let somebody else, because once you upholster it, there's no money left in it. There's a couple of telltale signs that it's a Howard. There's a chamfering to the edge of some of the internal timbers as well and the external timbers of the frame, which was something Howard did for the quality of the way the upholstery moved around the frame when they were finished. And then there's this big black stretcher that goes right underneath. Howard were the only people to do that, notably on the majority of this type of their furniture. The sturdy construction of this early Victorian daybed indicates that it's most likely by the high-end 19th century furniture maker Howard & Sons, who set up shop in London in 1820. By the mid-19th century, none of the nation's great houses were considered complete without furnishings by this celebrated furniture maker. Repaired and ready for the new owner to reupholster, it could be worth around £1,000. This is of interest to me as well. It's beaten up to hell, but it's, it's charming and I'd pay, because of the state, it's in £200. Do you know, I thought that was what you were going to say. Yeah. I'm beginning to read I, your mind. I started at 350 and then I thought, no, it's just not worth it, because the, the state it's in. So that's I mean, if I'm you could make it up to 300 maybe? Just... Drew Pritchard is in Cornwall, revisiting the impressive Pridol place for the first time in over a decade. Have we all got more wrinkles, less hair, grey? You still look good. Oh! We've not yeah. fared so well. Yeah. He's trying to put a deal together for a Howard & Sons daybed and an 18th century mahogany table. Because of the state, it's in £200. So that's I mean, if you I'm could make it up to £300, maybe? Just... Mm. Can I buy that? Yeah. If 350 is acceptable on that one, I'll give you 250 for the table. God, you Tight's the word you're looking for. Yeah. Yeah, I know. I know. Um, oh, OK. Thank you very much. What we're seeing in this shed is the mentality that goes across the majority of these old country houses and estates and families. They only ever bought quality. So if it's worn out, bashed, stripped down, in a bit of a state, it doesn't matter. It's still good. It's going to be worth something to somebody one day. Put it in the shed. All right, one, two. The extra pairs of hands from the Pridol staff are proving useful. Cross it. And I watch the other painting behind it. Yeah. Watch the other one behind. Oh, God, they're covered in woodwork. OK, right, now spin it. Panels at the back of the room sort of 
now I've got closer to them and I'm able to move sort of face onto them, I'm looking at them thinking, what the hell are these? You know, are they just tapestries? Are they just panels? Because you can't see, they're just flat brown, nothing. And then I moved my head and all of a sudden I could see a face and the body of a horse. And I thought, oh my God, they're paintings. Really big paintings. So I've got to see these. I mean, these are extraordinary. Just gently, I just want to, don't really want to rub the surface. I'm just trying to not touch the paint and just get the dirt uh, off. And look, there's an eye, two eyes. Oh, amazing. All I'm doing is just trying to get the water to just eat through the dust and take the dust off the surface without doing too much damage. Extraordinary. Well, well, well. Painted on embossed leather, these pieces have been remounted on plywood and look like they might have been from the 19th century. But they'll need to be professionally cleaned and assessed to be sure. A pair of paintings of this size and date could be worth around £5,000. I bought some of these near Bath yeah. about three years ago. And I bought six for 1,200 quid. Really? Yeah. Well, these are more expensive. They're rather more finely done. <laughs> no, they're not. The other <laughs> one. <laughs> but if I said to you, for the pair, and there's one bid and one bid only, and I won't pay any more, and it's £1,500 for the pair, and that's it. And Done. I'm stretching Done. myself. Happy? Done. Yeah. Sold? Fine, I'll yeah. take them. I'd, I'd love to see the finished result. Yeah. We don't really know what we've got yet. We know they're two nice, attractive battle scene paintings, and that's really exciting. For £1,500, I've got all that excitement, and there's definitely a profit in them. Right. Where's next? Next is the battery house for the generator. OK, all right. Supposedly, Prido Place was the first house in Cornwall to get electricity. Yeah. Um, so this is what it is. Smooth as a whistle. So here, wow. it, here it is. I have never seen that many battery cases like this, ever. It's amazing, These isn't it? are the most I've ever seen one of these in a life, <coughs> six or seven, in a church in Cumpen Machna. Incredible, aren't they? Wow. The battery house was where the estate's electricity was stored. The diesel generator next door produced electricity that was stored here in a series of interconnected Le Clanche cell batteries, consisting of glass jars containing an electrolyte solution, a cathode and a nanode. These were then chained together to store electricity for the estate. Electricity was installed at Prideaux in 1905, some 30 years before the UK national grid was born, making the Prideaux battery house and the glass jars in it almost 120 years old. This is extraordinary. Is it? It really is. Man, you just don't see this stuff. This is something... Do you know the... I always say the best bits about our job... Yeah. ..are getting into places that nobody else does. Yeah. When's the last time you came in here? About uh, 34 years ago. I mean, what would I do in here? Excuse me. I think this is the first time we've seen the glass in the battery room as well. I've never seen complete ones. Their old batteries used to be in glass liners. Even some really old cars had glass box batteries. You see one here, there and everywhere all the time, because they were common. Millions of them were made. But 113 in one room, never seen the like. They're just brilliant decorative pieces. They make the most fantastic um, flower vases. vases. Could I buy ten? Four fifty. You're on. For ten. Yeah. Happy days. Anyway, right. Right. Okay. That's a really good day. Good. We did and well. It was a good day, wasn't it? It's a good it? day. We found yeah. some great things. So today, you know, once you start to look through the dirt and the grime and the breaks and the rot and the active woodworm and the bits missing, what do we have? We've got a 19th century pair of very best Holland and Sons open armchairs. We have got a Howard chaise long. We have the largest collection of those battery vases that I've ever bought. And obviously those extraordinary painted panels, which we are yet to find out what exactly they are. An extraordinarily good day doing the job I absolutely love to do. It's been absolutely wonderful to have Drew and T here. I just love it. I mean, I learned so much. It's really interesting to me about the things he knows about, you know, the casters on the chairs, etc. You know, just tiny little details that completely escaped me before. And um, terribly exciting to find those two panels.
That was a day to remember, pulling unbelievably good, wonderful, unfound, fresh to the market antiques out of old barns of a really notable house. Okay. They were uh, back in the day. They're a bit beaten up now. So um, now, unsurprisingly, we are out in the stable block. As soon as I open the door, straight away I can see three things immediately that I'm interested in looking at more. I want to, I want to know a bit more about those. These may be of interest, okay. unsurprisingly, these grubby old chairs. Just need to check they're a similar size. I'm thinking this one might be a little bit smaller. Oh, is it? They look like a pair. Do you mind if we just hoik no, them no. out? Absolutely, help yourself. Tea? Yeah, okay, I'll do you want me to go out first? <sighs> All right, let's just lay him on its back. On the back, we're not going to do any damn more, more damage than already there. OK, so, very good Copen Collinson caster on the back there. Very nice. Yes. Let's get the other one out. There's a pair of 19th century low open armchairs, and they're good. You can tell, very good leg, very good caster. Cope Collinson casters, the Rolls Royce of, of caster manufacturers in the 19th century. They're in a right state. I'd say. But. <laughs> Worth the journey. Well, they could be. They've got, they've got a good name. A name is? There. There. See? What does it say? Holland and Son. Flip it up, unsurprised to see on both of them Holland and Sons. So, extremely good London maker. The quality of what they did was just better than most, to be honest. It's up there, you know, it's right up there. Holland and Sons was founded in 1843 and were later granted a royal warrant by Queen Victoria. They made furniture for Buckingham Palace and Balmoral, among other royal residences. This pair of armchairs date to the Victorian period and, once refurbished, could be worth around £2,750. I don't have any plans for them, I must confess. Apart from sending them to fast price to you. Well, I'll buy them. I'm not sure about a vast price, but well, I'll oh, buy them. On. One would be worth very little. A pair really helps it's them good a good news. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I'm trying to... This is why I'm talking so long, because I'm just trying to work out a price. <laughs> uh, <laughs> it's funny you say that, because in my head, I was thinking, what's going to offer me? <laughs>